Hi there, and welcome to 9 p.m. in Saigon. The city's lack of a true, true central business district means that traffic flows at a steady pace at nearly all hours of the day. With many of its 9.5 million inhabitants commuting from end to end of the massive city on a daily basis. Now we're heading to the immediate region's only airport, which is smack in the middle of the city, just to the north of the bustling District 1. There is another much larger airport now under construction, as in, things have actually been built at this point. But for now, southern Vietnam still relies on this airport's overcrowded facilities. As a bit of a stopgap measure, there's a new terminal being constructed on this site, which cannot come soon enough. Tonight I'll be flying to Seoul at the airport's busiest international time of the day the 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. bank when the majority of flights to Korea and Japan leave. Before we head inside to check in, let me welcome any of you that are new to the channel. My name is Kevin and I am the Flip Flop Traveler. I'm here to make honest content about flights, hotels, trains, and cruises. I paid for this trip out of pocket, and as always, the price that I paid is in the description below. Asiana had no prior knowledge that I'd be filming today, and I wasn't compensated by them for doing so. Everything in this video is my personal opinion based on my own unique experience. The rest, I'll let speak for itself. Let's get started. Check-in was a breeze, but at this time of night, immigration and security queues most certainly will not be. So make sure you arrive a solid three hours before your departure time unless you're able to use the e-gates. I love airlines that have the exact seating charts at the check-in counter. It's such a great tool, especially when there's going to be a language barrier of some sort. Are there any other countries that do this? So if you check in baggage, you're supposed to wait at the end of the counter to watch your bag go through the scanner and keep going. Though they don't really talk about this much anymore. But if your bag is stopped, there are these monitors in the immigration line for passengers who need to get out of line and go back for a baggage inspection. Heading to the Rose Lounge now, which is actually my favorite lounge at the airport at the moment. Admission was included with my ticket, but it's also currently the Priority Pass Lounge as well. So, I sort of paid for this flight some 12 years ago. You see, way back when, Bank of America, strangely enough, had an Asianic credit card. I signed up for a bonus of around 60,000 points, and they've just been sitting in that account ever since, as I occasionally accumulated more points with Asiana. The problem with Asiana points, though, if you will, is the limited number of ways that you can easily spend them. Historically, Asiana points have always been the cheapest way to book Lufthansa first class. But because of a weird three day in advance booking rule Asiana has, every time I've tried to use them, I came up empty. So I needed to get from Southeast Asia to the US, and I knew I wanted to use up these points before the merger. More on that in a bit. So within my range of dates, I basically told myself, book anything to Europe or North America, and then we'll take it from there. Luckily, I found a ticket via Incheon to London Heathrow. That's a heck of a lot closer to New York than Saigon, so it was a win. Currently, Ajana flies to 60 international and 7 domestic destinations. Relatively speaking, Ajana has a small presence in Vietnam though, with just 5 current flights per day, compared to the around 50 or 60 flights per day between Seoul and Vietnam. As we wait for boarding to begin, a couple of quick notes about the merger that I mentioned. Kumo Group, Ajana's largest shareholder, in 2019 announced the airline's sale due to an internal financial crisis. At the time, it was thought that the parent company of Jeju Air was the best suitor, but then Hyundai Development Company swooped in to close the deal, until the Korea Development Bank, also a shareholder in Ajana, blocked the deal. Some months later, in November of 2020, the government announced a plan for Korean Air and Asiana to merge. The three low-cost carriers that the two airlines also collectively own would be joined together under one brand as well. There were 14 essential governments that would need to approve the merger for it to move forward, and it's been approved by 13 thus far, with only the US blocking the transaction. Asiana offered to cut its cargo services to the US, and Korea offered to transfer some aircraft and crew to Air Premia. But the Department of Justice stayed firm and continues to do so now. I think it's widely understood that eventually some sort of agreement will be able to be made. But the DOJ is worried about a true monopoly between South Korea and the US due to Delta's profit sharing with Korean Air. The korean Asiana delta combo would absolutely dominate the more or less open skies market between the two countries. 
We shall see what actually comes of this. Boarding began on time and the scales were out in full swing. When flying economy, I've always found Ajana to be very strict with carry-on baggage, with I believe their 10 kilo weight limit. This route sees a mix of 777-200ERs, A330s, and A321s. So tonight, I more than lucked out with the 777 with the newest of Ajana's interiors. As we head down the jet bridge, let's take a look at tonight's flight stats. So let, let me just say loud and clear straight off the bat that I think Asiana's colors on the 777 and the A350s are easily the least attractive colors on any plane interior that I've ever flown on. The purple version that they use on the A380s is much better, but the mustard fever dream aside, this cabin was surprisingly really comfortable. The cabin is laid out in six rows with a one-to-one -one configuration for a total of 24 seats. Each row is staggered, so be sure to get a true window seat if you're flying solo, or perhaps the closer together honeymoon seats if flying with a partner. Or perhaps seats on opposite side of the aircraft if you and said partner had a rough vacation. The only thing really of note is that seat 5 Kilo is designated as the pet seat. If there is a dog in the cabin, they will be in 5 Kilo. I had to call Ejana at one point to change my seat assignment, and when I told them that I wanted 4 Kilo, they proactively mentioned this and asked if I had an issue with it, which I didn't. As for the seats themselves, they are absolutely fantastic. As a matter of fact, the entire experience was fantastic. Perhaps my expectations were a bit more tempered than they should have been for this one. The reason I personally think this specific model is so great is because of how spacious it is. Seats in this category are generally 20 to 21 inches wide and 17 to 19 inches deep. These seats here are 22 and a half inches wide, but that's not the best part for me. The best part is the depth of the seat at an insane 21 inches. As someone who flies a lot, the depth of the seat is truly the one single thing that in my opinion can make or break a great flight. Etihad 787s for example, I love the airline, but I am numb every time I finish a flight since one side of their seat is as shallow as 13 inches. This though was truly a treat, and the seats appear to be brand new as well. In fact, these are precisely the same seats that you'll find on their A350s. The armrests were unobtrusive and comfortable, one having a small item storage in it. The side table had a bit of open storage, specifically for a bottle of water and headphones and an amenity kit. The headrest could be manipulated in just about all ways and held its pose quite firmly, which I appreciated. Then of course, the seat had all of the mod cons that you'd expect, such as a USB port, universal outlet, and a later generation in-flight entertainment remote. The cabin was also just absolutely spotless. Turning on the flash in the foot cubby area can often be a pretty scary sight looking at you Lufthansa, but not here. The tray table, which folded down from the wall in front, was also very sturdy and easily pivoted out of the way in case you wanted to get out mid-meal. The crew came around with pre-departure drinks and wet towels while handing out the full menu and drink list for the flight. Soon enough, we pushed back, six minutes behind schedule, and our 15-year-old 777 made its way to the runway while the safety video began to roll.
Here's your oh so friendly reminder to click that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share this video with friends and family. Those are truly the easiest ways, and they're all free for you to help support the channel. If you'd like to support me further, my Patreon is also linked in the description below. Many thanks in advance. Oh, but no overhead vents, unfortunately, though the cabin was kept pretty cool. The beautiful spool up, takeoff, and airport stats are coming up next. After takeoff, I had a look around the menus and the duty-free catalog that probably weighed around 30 pounds. Let's check out the in-flight comforts. The pillow was a decent size and firmness, especially for a regional flight. The blanket was thin, but very soft, almost like some sort of artificial cashmere. The headphones, though, were a fail. Cheap quality and on-ear. And the slippers were decent quality. The drink and food carts began to soon roll down the aisles. It seems like Ajana uses carts for all of their services, and in most cases, I appreciate it for its efficiency. Here's the full menu and wine list for our flight. Note that the prices in red on the wine list are my addition to the graphic to give you an idea of the current retail prices in USD for each bottle. On these late night north-south routes, most airlines actually wait until just before landing for the full meal to be served, a, a breakfast in that case but I kind of prefer just having it after takeoff, even if the timing doesn't make that much sense. On offer was a caprese salad as an appetizer with the choice of one of three courses for the main. Beef burgundy, shrimp and broccoli kanji, or stir-fried smoked pork and chicken, which was my choice. I really enjoyed all of it. This might sound like a duh moment, but I always find that Korean food on Korean airlines may not be the fanciest dishes on offer, but they are incredibly consistent in quality and taste. Had to point out the incredibly chunky silverware, not a common sight in the air. After the meal trays were cleared, the dessert and coffee trolley came down the aisle and a lime cheesecake was served up. Cheesecake adjacent, I would say, but tasty nonetheless. A peek at the bathroom showed a basic setup, but it was kept clean like the rest of the cabin. Otherwise, there's a decent selection of movies. Nothing to blow your mind, but you'll be occupied for the flight, no doubt about it. The only downside was the moving map, which had a map background which brought back to life memories of dial-up modems. And here we have the bed in full flat mode, 
again, very generous measurements. The surface itself is as wide as 26 inches, but if you measure to the wall, it's up to 33 inches. Around 6.30, well before dawn, this was basically the most exciting thing that I saw out my window, as we were in our final approach. We looped around and landed from the north, so it was truly just blackness outside of my window. The quick landing and airport stats are coming up next. If you head down to the description, you'll find my next 5 videos to come out, as well as a link to many other of my business class trip reports. Anyway down there, don't forget to subscribe. I release full length videos every Thursday and Saturday. So this was really pleasant. I used to fly Asiana kinda often back when they used to be known as having one of the best economy classes out there. From then until now, I found the crew to still be warm, friendly, and attentive, even on a short red-eye flight. My middle of the road expectations combined with my above average experience really did make for a really nice flight. I dare to say almost as good as ANA on one of these short southeast to northeast routes. My job's not over though. There's a very strange dynamic that I've never mentioned before, and it's the not difficulty, it's not difficult but the surrealness of getting off of a plane, filming what I know will be the last clip for a video, and six seconds later, starting to film the first clip of the next video, and starting the editing process all over in my mind. Especially when sleep deprived, it makes for some very interesting perspectives. And that'll do it for today. I do hope that you enjoyed this trip report. If you did, please be sure to click that like button and subscribe for two new videos each week. I'll see you next time on the continuation of this itinerary to London, or as I like to call it, six seconds later. As always, thanks for watching until the end. By the way, the quiz slides will be back at some point, just still trying to catch up from my cold.